All right, so um, a little shorter. Uh, the so again, I'm Joanna Merson, and I work in the infographics lab at the University of Oregon. If you're not familiar with our work. The Infographics Lab is a mapping and geospatial technology facility in the Department of Geography at University of Oregon. So we serve the department and the university community, faculty and staff, students, as well as the state of Oregon for um, the application of geospatial technologies, cartographic design, um, geographic information science. We support instruction, public service, such as projects like this um, at the university. You may usually recognize um, Infographics Lab projects with uh, migration of ungulates. I think a lot of people are familiar, a lot of nodding heads. So this is a, a completely different vein through which um, we're applying these uh, geographic principles or cartographic principles. So when it comes to um, the hazards for tsunamis in Oregon, first I'd like to thank Daniel Coe for my 15 minute introduction. <laughs> um, but in summary, um, an offshore earthquake or a Cascadia subduction zone event, if it occurs, it will inundate the West Coast within tens of minutes. So according to Dogami, um, the Department of Geological and Mineral Industries, survival of the majority of the population requires spontaneous evacuation on foot. Run. So um, this risk is very current and real. In fact, this is the text message that I got yesterday. Um, if you can't read that, it's a University of Oregon test alert. Um, it was part of the uh, Great Oregon Shakeout in which people were sent an emergency message suggesting you practice preparing for an earthquake. Um, so we partnered with uh, Dogami to design uh, a template for evacuation and wayfinding maps um, that will help uh, coastal Oregon communities. And this presentation will d share our sort of design process, the outputs that we came to, and what in went into creating a template that could be used for making these style of maps for multiple uh, coastal communities. So Dogami created, um, so it's our geologist partners, um, created a very thorough model, much like the ones done in Washington, um, in which they were looking at flow ac accumulation models, examining the timing between an earthquake event wave time arrival, routing and evacuation distances for a person on foot. So as the wave's coming in and you need to get out. So for example, given you live somewhere near the shore, um, you may have 20 minutes to get a quarter mile, in which case you might be able to walk. If you live closer to the coast, you have less time to get farther, you may have to run. And their models um, created these types of zones and um, this was sort of their draft output within their 30-odd you know, um, page report, uh, which was about the potential for communicating this information to the public. Um, it was a draft, and they, uh, at that point, knew they wanted to bring in a design team to help them communicate the information and distill the information from this 30-page report to be able to tell people no, the important information. And the goal was knowing where to go, and how fast you have to travel to beat the wave. And this is where this um, kind of catchphrase comes from for this entire series of maps and my title, which we consider the beat the wave maps. So for creating this um, template and these for a series of maps, we had a few considerations when we sat down with the team and worked out before deciding what is the end product gonna look like, what are the goals that we need to reach um, in order to make our design decisions. So one of the first considerations was who are our users? So for this particular set of maps, um, it's going to be residents, um, vacationers, maybe people staying at hotels um, in order to people who've been in, communicate with people who are either visiting the area or live in the area. So the audience for this isn't um, engineers. We're not looking at how to design, um, you know, where to place new structures. That information, you go directly to the report and communicate with Dogami. This is, again, where to go and how fast you have to travel to get there. Additionally, we wanted to create um, a product that could be printed on common printers. So sticking with our eight and a half by 11 output, which as someone who does a lot of web work, is not interactive and very tiny. Um, <laughs> our team though has an expertise uh, in the lab in, in um, print and static products, and so that's where that comes in. Additionally, thinking about what that might look like when printed um, in black and white. Um, or on various printers with various quality inks and papers and how that might affect our output. So having these clear puts. Um, 
The third consideration we had is that it had to coordinate with the existing map series. So this is a different um, sort of paired set of maps that uh, Dogami has prepared for various communities along the coast, which shows, um, oops, or go back, you didn't see that yet, um, which, which shows two different zones, our orange and our yellow, of um, two different types of earthquakes and the hazard for a tsunami that might occur. So in the case of the orange, we're looking at a distant tsunami, which would only have sort of a, um, sorry, just an earthquake, which would make a smaller inundation zone, just shown in orange on the maps, or a local Cascadia subduction event, which would cause much more inundation covering the yellow areas. So knowing that this map series is already published and out and yellow is the risk, yellow is uh, our risk too, so that we can coordinate with that. So this is where we started, and this is where we ended up with our template. And I'm going to take a minute to break down some of the different parts and pieces and the decisions that we made um, in order to create this product, which does look very different from the products in Washington. And I don't think, I think a question came up about the utility of each, and I, I don't see them as a competing either. I, I see them as different products for different users with different goals. So kind of starting at the bottom and working our way up, thinking about the base map. Um, one of the things that we wanted to really do was bring in uh, some adjustments to the aesthetic and the design. And looking at the ocean and coming back to that picture of this is the area mapped. This is Rockaway Beach. Um, and you can see the houses and that's actually a resort. So an example of our users would be people who are staying at this hotel and might need to have a map on check-in of what they should do should they feel an earthquake and have 10 minutes to beat the wave. Um, so one of the things we wanted to do was just m sort of bring up the texture of the product. And so we actually created, um, used imagery and created these sort of waves reminiscent of the actual uh, water and the direction that the wave would come in. In this case, we have a very simple uh, tsunami direction. But in cases where there are inlets, um, we actually would see the wave traveling in a more complex route. Um, just a fun little note, the way that we actually made those waves is we have a multi-ring buffer that we turned white and applied a Gaussian blur. So um, man-made waves. <laughs> Additionally, when it came to uh, the texture of the main map, we took away that LIDAR. So the LIDAR, that can be used um, to bring a very detailed modeling um, when it comes to the purpose of communicating the map, we actually find it doesn't add anything. Um, it creates a little bit of noise and a little bit of distraction. It's a little bit hard um, for the purposes of our map. So we actually replaced it with, with a much smoother uh, hill shade. Coming back to that goal, knowing where to go and how fast you have to travel to beat the wave. So that initial map, the way that they tr did that was with the series of colored um, fill on the roads and a lot of text all over the map that's bold italicized and underlines that just says do not slow down but for um when we sort of looked through this and spoke with different people if we feel as though if you start in the red zone i'm going speed red i can then go to the orange zone and slow down and then i'm on a road in the yellow zone i can go a little slower but the information that's in the model behind this says if i'm in the red zone i need to start at my run and I need to keep running until I hit that safe zone. And so one of our goals was to communicate that continuous speed that you need to um, take in order to be safe and survive. And so what we did was separate the speed information from the road network. We decided to step away from a turn by turn direction, that that information um, is something that people can uh, work out if we're presenting them in advance with some information that says if you're starting in this area how fast you need to go and roughly what direction and where is that sort of safety boundary of where the inundation zone is going to end. So this was um, a, a major design change and intellectual contribution that we brought to the table and working with our partners at Dogami um, they were uh, on board with. And we actually, again, we also did not design in a vacuum. We had regular meetings with the geologists, and they brought it back to their team and their stakeholders, um, which we would design and iterate. And iterate. And iterate. And iterate. So. Um, the, so showing just a brief sampling of ideas that we threw around or just a single sampling of what that might have looked like in between um, with many other ideas that came through. But 
where we, where we landed was with um, these, these zones. As part of bringing that information um, away from the road network, that also came into the legend. So similarly, there was the idea of we have these various speeds that the model came out with. They actually had six. They were slow walk, walk, fast walk, slow jog, which is actually one category, jog, run, sprint, and apparently there was one area that had a seventh one, which didn't get a name. I'm going to call it the Hussein Bolt. Um, <laughs> The speeds at which they used are written at the bottom. And so what we decided to do was not just change the map, but the legend. How is the, how is the meaning of these speed arrows uh, presented? So we broke it down with consultation, and we collapsed the six categories into three. Sprint, the entire way, walk, or jog, the entire way, or walk, based on, again, the estimated time arrival and distance that you have to travel. So this is kind of a part way. Um, look of where we got, and our final product ended up being this more 3D mini-map uh, version, conveying the idea that you need to go uphill and continue at your total speed when the tsunami comes to get from the ionization zone to your exit, which reaches the safety zone, and on to an assembly point. So a brief um, inspiration from Randall Monroe, if you can't read this from your seat. Randall from XKCD says, if I could live anywhere, I would choose to live in the example map from geography books that explains what everything is called. <laughs> I just want to not live here on this day. <laughs> I think he wouldn't want to do that. But breaking down back into our map, um, some other parts I want to uh, talk about in sort of map elements and the decisions that we made. Um, first being looking at the symbology, so our um, points of interest. We really thought about what is the visual hierarchy on this map? Um, at this point, the uh, symbols for things such as police stations and schools were really yelling. But they're really reference information. They're not going to be somewhere where you can stop and get help if they're also in the inundation zone. So we really lowered them in the visual hierarchy. That information is there, so you know that it's there, but it's not something that on this map is going to help you in a tsunami. There's also a consideration about bridge failure. I think this is something people, especially here in Washington, are well aware of. I know about a year or two ago there was a significant bridge failure. Um, not all bridges, in fact, most bridges are not retrofitted to survive an earthquake. And so they have marked on the map the idea that there are bridges which are likely to fail when that earthquake hits. So this example of people that live um, north of this lake, normally you could just cross that bridge and head a couple blocks up north, up 12th Avenue. But actually, if once that bridge fails, you're going to have to go south, and you're going to have to sprint down and around the lake in order to get out. So we want to make it very clear that that bridge is potentially going to fail. So we highlight that in the legend, and we brought it up in the visual hierarchy. We also adjusted our, our catchments, and these essentially were mod modeled by Do Dogami to figure out the evacuation people, depending on where you are. I like to think of these as drainages for people. So a key consideration here was, again, what is that direction you're going to go? Everyone in this area go north. Everyone in this area go east. No one go west. <laughs> um, the key here is that we wanted these to not look like pathways. There's not something physically on the ground that you can follow that's going to lead you out. So like many, you can flip through this, like many different features, there's a, a range of symbologies that we used. And where we landed on were these little uh, orange dots, um, which we think went away from a very standard sort of pathway looking line features that we might have. Another key feature that we have are these exit points. And this is where a road intersects the limit of the inundation zone. So which are the roads which will lead you to safety instead of a dead end or a hill that is going to be very difficult to scramble up? So these, um, we first wanted to, tr we tried a lot. Um, we connected them with the symbols that are on the actual signs. Uh, this type of symbology, I think, would be powerful if we had um, larger um, material that we were working with, larger media, or if there were fewer. But when it comes to several dozen of these on the map, um, they become confusing. They're too small to see. We liked the idea, though, of connecting the blue escape to the blue signs, which you actually see out in the community. 
Um, so something else we tried was keeping the blue on the sign, but reducing that mental processing required. Um, this is a, it's gonna take you to the safety zone. So we thought, let's put the word safe on there and let's use that rectangle that's similar to some areas where they're actually painting these lines on the road, which um, indicate this is the direction and maybe people have seen often the sign that says now entering or exiting tsunami zone. So that same area, we even get a line right across the road that grabs your attention. However, when we spoke with the team from Dogami, this became a problem for potential legal reasons. Is this really a safe spot? What are the other hazards that might happen there? Let's not make that claim. Um, this single element actually had the most iterations of anything we did on the map. Purple to match the roots, green for safety, blue to match the signs, dots, bars, icons. One of the final iterations that we landed on was using the word exit. So working on that idea of you are now exiting the tsunami zone, and also, we worked that into our little Picto legend, um, which shows the small legend people walk, jogging, and running up to that exit point at the boundary of the tsunami and the safety zones. Labeling, um, we did a lot all over the map, things such as kerning out um, the text for the ocean. But some of the key things we did on top of that was putting our speeds right on the arrows. This is an opportunity where you don't have to look back and forth at that legend. Um, and if you're in an area with the lines that are very long, you don't need to tell which direction looking for the arrowhead. Um, so we've got you know, arrows on arrows uh, and using our labeling to do that. And it tells the reader that they need to maintain that speed from the beginning through the end. Another contribution that we did was a back page. Originally, this map was conceptualized as just being one-sided. So this can be two-sided printed or, I guess, from a home printer, potentially, excuse me, stapled together. So we've added a fair amount of uh, text to the back page, um, which actually opening up that additional space, doubling the amount of space allowed for uh, additional information to be given uh, to our readers. And this left us with a much more cleaned up, simplified legend. We have less, um, do not delay, do not slow down, italics and exclamation marks um, by putting that information directly into the map rather than needed in text information. Moving to one of the final least, uh, uh, least mappy things, as Alethea would say, um, was our header. Um, we did keep it a little mappy by moving a locator map up there. So again, this would be created as a series of maps for a dozen communities. So each is gonna have their small locator map. Um, working on the visual hierarchy so that um, our catch phase beat the phrase is not the brightest thing, even though we like it. We moved it into the tsunami evacuation symbols. A little cleaner. So that brings us back to our final product. Um, this is what we uh, created for Rockaway Beach, um, looking at the sort of sample start and the current, uh, current version. In addition to making that, we actually um, produced an entire style guide uh, for Dogami. So that's shown on the left here in Illustrator is a file that they can open. We have the template, which includes the neat lines, or sorry, neatly organized layers, um, which correspond to an entire um, set or instruction set we worked out that goes from ArcMap through to this point, um, as well as sw color swatches and symbols um, uh, for producing this for each each community. It is still a manual process. It is um, in, involving a little bit of artistry, maybe not as much as Washington's artistry, but, um, but uh, that's there. And so with that, I would like to thank you for your time. Um, and of course, the contributors to this team, I wanna make sure to thank Alethea and Jim and Greg, our student who has now graduated and moved on to Land IQ. And I would also like to say for this presentation, screenshots for the win. Thank <laughs> you.